What might the fastest SUV you can buy be like? According to Alfa Romeo, this is it, the Stelvio Quadrifoglio. Rivals make similar claims, but this Italian high-performance SUV appears to have the firepower to match its bravado, offering the same Ferrari-derived twin-turbo V6 that features in the glorious Giulia Quadrifoglio Super Sports Saloon. This top Stelvio model was lightly revised for the 2020 model year, but its essential character hasn't changed. It's rather refreshing in an automotive world currently obsessed with electrification to come across a car like this. Proper sports cars might be a dying breed, but proper sports car engines are still, for the moment anyway, alive and well. And the Alfa Romeo Stelvio Quadrifoglio model we look at here absolutely has one. A turbocharged 510 horsepower V6 by turbo shoehorned in below its carbon fiber bonnet. This power plant was designed by former Ferrari engineer Gianluca Pavetti and another ex-Ferrari engineer, Philippe Criff, handled the team responsible for trying to make this big SUV handle somewhere in the same ballpark as the Alfa Romeo Giulia Quadrifoglio saloon that shares nearly all this fast Stelvio's engineering. Which is quite a task given that this SUV is 200 kilograms heavier. How does it fare? Let's find out. This exclusive Stelvio model certainly has the stats to back up its bold performance claims. Under the bonnet, as with the Giulia Quadrifoglio, lies a 2.9 litre petrol V6 by turbo power plant that's essentially a cut down version of the 4 litre V8 used in Ferrari's 488 model. It develops a thundering 510 brake horsepower, which at the time of this test was an output matched only by the upgraded and much pricier S version of this model's other most obvious rival, the Mercedes AMG GLC 63S. This Alpha storms to 62 miles an hour in a 3.8 second time that identically matches that Merc. This figure only slightly slower than that Ferrari we just mentioned. And should you find yourself on a track or a stretch of unrestricted autobahn, it'll keep powering on up to 176 miles an hour. Talking of racetracks, at its original launch, this car set a new SUV lap record at the infamous Nürburgring Nordschleife, 7 minutes 51.7 seconds. The kind of time that, until recently, you'd have needed a dedicated sports car to achieve. Alpha's thrown all the performance technology it has at this Halo model and on this top Stelvio you get one feature not fitted to UK versions of the Giulia Quadrifoglio, the Italian maker's innovative Q4 all-wheel drive system. This normally sends all its torque to the rear wheels but should slippage be detected up to 50% of drive can be sent to the front axle. This works with a range of other advanced drive systems that combine to try and make this portly 1.83 ton SUV handle something like a sports saloon. Active torque vectoring helps get the power down through the bends. Uh, active suspension varies the damping, a multi-link rear setup. And Alpha chassis domain control connects the different systems to deliver the best setup as the car is being driven. There's also an Alpha Active Aero package that alters the angle of the front splitter to help this model scythe through the air more cleanly. Does it all work? To an impressive point, yes. If you were to jump into this car after pounding around a race circuit in a Giulia Quadrifoglio or indeed a BMW M3 or a Mercedes AMG C63, you'd notice the extra weight and height, but that's to be expected. Otherwise, this Manic Stelvio deports itself impressively, helped by direct, quick and intuitive steering feel, via which you can slingshot away from each corner apex, though the Pirelli P0 tyres don't quite have the grip of the Pirelli P0 Corsa rubber that you can have on this car's Giulia Quadrifoglio showroom stablemate. 
As in an ordinary Stelvio, eight-speed paddle shift auto transmission is mandatory with gorgeous, big, cool, silver Ferrari-style steering wheel paddles and shift times that you can alter via the modes of the usual Alpha DNA drive mode system. That DNA drive setup also influences steering feel, throttle response and stability settings via its three core modes plus the settings of that active suspension system just mentioned. The default settings are either blue themed N for natural or for the times when you're feeling more eco-minded, green themed A for advanced efficiency. You're going to want to take every opportunity though to switch into D for dynamic in which form this car really does feel a good deal more eager and agile and you don't have to be driving flat out with a Marinello mindset to enjoy it. If you want the crisp D response without the firm ride that would normally be part of it, you can press this damper button in the middle of the DNA dial. For those after a track style feel, this Quadrifoglio variant adds an extra race setting in which form you get all the settings turned up to the max and an evocative, deep, gravelly engine note. That engine note never quite dies, and if you petrol running through your veins, you'll be glad that it doesn't. Though that very fact means this Alpha can't provide quite the cruising refinement of a rival Mercedes-AMG GLC 63 or a Jaguar F-Pace SVR. But we think it has more character as a result, and a more immersive feel, aided by a freshly added set of performance pages. That's a section of the centre screen which allows Quadrifoglio owners to really interact with the performance and drivetrain parameters of their car. A technical gauges section offers virtual dials for oil, turbo boost and torque, and torque management shows the front to rear percentage torque split, plus you can monitor the temperature of the drivetrain, and if you want to indulge your hooligan side, populate a drag race section with your best times to 60 or 100 miles an hour, or over an eighth or a quarter of a mile, plus your shortest braking distance. Brilliant. The torque proportions of the Stelvio work well with the Quadrifoglio embellishment, but visual changes to the latest version of this performance variant are slight. A smarter, glossy black finish adorns what Alpha calls the front trilobe, the brand's unique heart-shaped front grille with its stylish cross and dragon badge. And as before, you get bespoke bumpers and piercing by Xenon headlamps give the car some serious overtaking presence. There are also these classic bonnet vents. In profile, the Stelvio is more jacked up five door hatch than SUV, with its swept back windscreen, curvy short roof line, power packed rear haunches, and a tailgate that's more steeply wrecked than you'd expect from a crossover. A confident central swage line flows through the door handles with an upward slant like that of this lower crease which separates wheel arches housing these bespoke 20 inch dark five hole rims. As an alternative 21 inches can also now be fitted this bigger wheel size seen for the first time on a Quadrifoglio. Either way through the rim spokes you can glimpse black or as in this case yellow aluminium calipers bespoke lower side skirts also feature. At the rear, there's also a potent lower rear air diffuser into which are housed the big bore exhausts. And this revised model has gloss black finished badge work, plus there are smarter LED rear light clusters with dark lenses. As usual, of more importance is the stuff you can't see, namely the use of ultra lightweight materials in this variant structure, including carbon fibre for the bonnet, roof, uh, front splitter, rear spoiler and body inserts, as well as aluminium for the doors and the wings. Right, let's take a seat at the wheel. What a disappointment it would have been if all the romance of the exterior had been compromised by a cabin fashioned as a pale pastiche of what the German brands already offer. It hasn't been. 
Instead, there's a cockpit that, to some extent at least, succeeds in combining classic alpha charisma with modern functionality. In this Quadrifoglia variant, it's been set apart with red-stitched sports seats upholstered in a leather and Alcantara combination. The dashboard and the door panels are also wrapped in stitched leather and there are carbon fibre inserts around the fascia and the lower centre console, plus Quadrifoglio cloverleaf badging on the steering wheel and the rev counter. That gauge is conventional, digital instruments would seem somehow out of place in this car. Other premium cabin touches include aluminium kick plates, bright silver pedals, embossed head restraints and an ambient lighting setup for a classy feel after dark. Changes made to this improved model include a revised leather trimmed steering wheel and a much nicer gear stick, under which, evocatively, is a little Italian flag. But the key improvement is this new 8.8 inch centre dash infotainment display, now a touchscreen, which adopts a more up to date layout with widgets which can be dragged and dropped to create a fully customizable home page in which each of the vehicle's functions becomes an app. Access to info is either via the screen, by voice, or by using this updated but still rather cheap feeling lower centre console dial. There's now a split screen format so that you can see different things all at once, audio, nav and phone functions for example. And further horizontal scrolling calls up screens for driver assistance, climate, vehicle information, uh, connected services and the engine and powertrain orientated performance pages we described in our driving experience section. Another redesigned screen is this 7-inch TFT display in the centre of the instrument cluster, now revised to offer more information in a more rational way. This can better show this updated model's freshly added autonomous driving technology features along with selectable screens for G-forces plus digital speed and trip computer data, the latter two displaying with a lower fuel economy meter. When it's time to take a seat in the rear, taller folk might find access hindered a little by this swept-backed roof line. Still, the rear door opens decently wide. And once inside, there's a lot more headroom than the sleek silhouette previously led you to expect. Legroom, though, isn't quite as good as in some direct rivals, though it's better than in a Porsche Macan. And a couple of tall folks sat behind a lanky driver will find their knees very close indeed to the scalloped cutouts indented into the front seat backs. A third centre seated passenger would have to sit legs astride this high centre transmission tunnel, above which is uh, a cubby, a couple of USB ports and a twin jet engine style set of centre vents which along with red stitched carbon trimmed door cards impart the necessary premium performance vibe. There are overhead LED reading lights, seat back nets, small door pockets with bottle holders and cup holders in this central armrest. And this optional panoramic glass roof gives what would otherwise be quite a dark cabin a much lighter area feel. Out back, you can specify the powered tailgate to include a hands-free feature so that it activates with a swipe of your foot beneath the bespoke bumper. And when it raises, a 525 litre boot is revealed with compartments under the floor in lieu of the proper spare wheel we'd much rather have. You get this recessed area to the right, four silver tie down points and a 40-20-40 split backrest so that if necessary longer items like skis can be slid in between two rear seated passengers. If you need more space, pushing forward the rear bench uh, by pulling on these cargo sidewall mounted catches extends the room available to 1600 litres. This Quadrifoglio variant, as you'd expect from its exalted price tag, which at the time of this test in autumn 2020 was around £73,000, comes with its own unique specification. 
that encompasses 20 inch alloy wheels, bi-xenon headlamps, LED tail lamps, dark tinted rear windows, bespoke quadrifoglio bumpers and side skirts, black painted aluminium brake calipers and quad sports exhaust poking out of the rear diffuser. Along with keyless entry, an acoustic thermic windscreen, all-round parking sensors and a powered tailgate. The Q4 all-wheel drive system works with Alpha Active Torque Vectoring to help get the power down through the bends. Alpha Active Suspension varies the damping and Alpha Chassis Domain Control connects the different systems to deliver the best setup as the car is being driven. Inside, the upholstery features a lovely red stitched leather and Alcantara combination. Plus, there's carbon fibre dash trim and a red starter button on the steering wheel, along with a race mode that you can access through the DNA Pro driving modes controller. There's also a new 8.8 .8 inch Alpha Connect center dash infotainment touchscreen with built in navigation, Apple CarPlay, Android Auto smartphone mirroring and a decent quality 10 speaker DAB audio system. Plus you get a rear view camera, a dual zone climate control, a wireless charging mat and an alarm. This model also now gets a suite of Alpha connected services which deliver advanced onboard connectivity. These include My Assistant, which enables the occupant to send a request for assistance to a call centre with the vehicle's position and identification code by pressing the SOS button or via the mobile app. My Remote, meanwhile, gives you control of your Quadrifoglio should you be brave enough to lend it out, allowing you to preset speed and area limits as well as check on vehicle location. Should the preset parameters be breached, the owner will be alerted via a smartphone or a smart watch or the Amazon Alexa or Google Home voice assistance systems. You'll also like the My Navigation feature, which offers applications for remote search of destinations and points of interest along your route, plus real-time traffic, weather and speed camera alerts. Other connected services on offer include My Car, which enables owners to monitor their car's health and servicing needs. My Wi-Fi, which allows an internet connection to be shared between up to eight onboard devices. And My Theft Assistance, which alerts the owner should any attempt be made to steal the car. What about extras? It wouldn't be too difficult to option this car up to a sticker price of around £90,000 if you really let rip. Is some restraint appropriate here? You decide. You'll want to consider the 21 inch wheel size upgrade and potentially also the ludicrously expensive Akrapovich sports exhaust, a cool £3,250. If that doesn't phase you, then look at the carbon ceramic brake disc option, which costs six and a half thousand pounds. Other key extras fitted here include a premium 900 watt 15 speaker Harman Kardon audio system, power adjustable front seats, an electrically operated sunroof, a hands free feature for the powered tailgate and a quadrifoglio leather and Alcantara trimmed flat bottom steering wheel with carbon inserts. You might also want to look at heated rear seats, uh, black painted roof bars and a power outlet in the boot. As for aesthetics, well, fresh options see customers now able to choose to option red or green seat belts instead of the usual classic black ones. Perforated upholstery can also be added in, as can carbon shell Sparco seats and extra coloured stitching for the upholstery and the dash. And you get a choice of eight body colours, including two tricoat finishes, Competizione Red, which is what we have here, and Trofeo White. Enough with options, let's take a look at standard safety features. As you'd expect on a premium mid-sized SUV, there's an AEB autonomous emergency braking system with pedestrian detection, plus a forward collision warning setup. You also get passive blind spot monitoring and lane departure warning systems. And no less than nine airbags, twin front and curtain bags, side bags for front and rear seat passengers, plus a driver's knee bag. 
Plus, of course, there are all the usual aids for traction and stability control, along, of course, with ABS, part of the, a clever IBS integrated braking system, a clever setup that replaces the usual vacuum brake booster and replaces it with a system that uses an electric motor to build pressure to aid braking. Even more importantly, should all of these features fail to prevent you from having an accident, you'll be protected by arguably the strongest body shell available in the segment, with rigidity improved by the use of advanced materials like carbon fibre, aluminium and aluminium composite. Alpha's keen to tell us that this revised model introduces fresh camera-driven advanced driver assistance systems that offer a degree of level 2 autonomous driving. But if you want those, then you'll have to find £1,500 extra for the driver assistance pack plus option we've got fitted here. This gives you eight further camera safety features, most of which, in our opinion, should be standard on a car of this price. These include lane keeping assist, active blind spot assist, active cruise control, traffic sign recognition with intelligent speed control, traffic jam assist with highway assist and driver attention assist. No one would expect this top 2.9 litre V6 bi-turbo quadrifoglio super SUV variant to be a paragon of frugality. But thanks to a cylinder deactivation system that cuts in under part throttle loads, it actually doesn't do too badly. Its figures, 28.8 miles to the gallon on the WLTP combined cycle and 222 grams per kilometre of WLTP rated carbon dioxide, are roughly equal to what you get on a rival Mercedes AMG GLC 63S. The readings quoted assume selection of the A, or Advanced Efficiency, DNA system driving mode, which softens off the throttle response to give better fuel consumption. There's a fuel consumption meter display in the instrument binnacle TFT readout, plus a selectable consumption history graphical display in the performance pages section of the center dash screen. The same section offers an efficient drive eco coaching setup that grades the frugality of your progress based on three criteria, acceleration, deceleration, and gear changing. As for peace of mind, well, you get the usual three-year unlimited mileage warranty covering parts, materials and labour, plus three years of AA contact support, which includes 24-hour roadside assistance, home start, uh, relay, relay plus uh, European cover, accident management plus access to travel information, legal advice and technical information. You can spread the cost of maintenance work by opting for an easy care servicing plan that runs from one to five years. It includes the cost of all labor, parts, and fluids, so you won't be landed with any unexpected bills. Insurance won't be cheap, rated at up to Group 50D. There are other super high performance SUVs at this price point that you could certainly consider as alternatives to this Stelvio Quadrifoglio. The most obvious being the Jaguar F-Pace SVR, the Porsche Macan Turbo and the Mercedes AMG GLC 63S. Each of these alternatives can offer a bit more polish than this Alpha. But in many ways, this Stelvio is a more uncompromising performance car. If that's what you're looking for, then that'll matter. The bi-turbo Ferrari-derived engine is worth the price of admission alone, and you get the all-wheel drive traction that's missing from this model's Giulia Quadrifoglio Sports Saloon Stablemate. The Quadrifoglio Verde four-leaf clover badge that sits over the front wheel arches of this SUV first featured on Ugo Sivoci's Alfa Romeo RL Targa Florio, a car with which that driver triumphed in the race of the same name back in 1923. Unlike its rivals, this model feels like it has that kind of heritage. And for that reason, we like it very much. <laughs>